There's a wonderful legend out of the early days of Christianity. As uh, the witness of the apostles grew and spread, and as more and more persons were turning to the way, persecution increased because Christ followers were, well, they were challenging the old ways, the ways of Jerusalem and Rome, in ways that were undermining the authority and control of Jerusalem and Rome. In this legend, Peter is in Rome and in fear of his life. He knows that the empire is after him and he runs for his life. He runs out of Rome. As he's running on the Appian Way, he encounters you-know-who, his risen Lord Jesus, heading back into Rome. Recognizing him, Peter asks in Latin, Quo vadas domine? Where are you going, Lord? Jesus responds in Latin, but I'm not going to try that one. It's a little longer. The translation says, I am going to Rome to be crucified again. Peter gets it. He understands what this is all about. And he returns to his ministry in the city where he will be martyred. Well, why tell you this story? <laughs> no, I'm not suggesting that you should all retake the course. I think that would be a great idea, but you know. Nor am I suggesting that you need martyrdom. Uh, but it is a reminder that there are things that we should not leave behind. There are tasks that are not yet done. There, there, are, there is work that must be completed. There's a journey that we must continue on. And there are practices that we must continue to practice. For several weeks, you have been part of a special, committed, covenanted community. I know we don't often think of courses, classes in this way. Maybe we should, but honestly, and especially a class in spiritual and ministerial formation aspires to be such an experience. Each week you have joined your classmates for virtual times of introspection, prayer, confession, challenge, and I hope practices and discipline and growth. We are now arriving at the end of this part of your journey. A question that may be on your mind is what now? How can I sustain the journey after the course requirements are complete? How can I sustain the relationships formed here? How can I maintain the disciplines this experience has brought into my life? How do I manage to remain accountable beyond myself? One outcome uh, we hope and I pray for is that you will find a way to continue your journey of formation with at least the same degree of intentionality as you have in this course. You know and I know not one of us has arrived, and we all need a level of disciplined practice to sustain us as we journey with Jesus wherever this road takes us. Another outcome is the possibility that you and others in the class will actually find a way to continue to journey together. Distance is no longer a challenge or a deterrent. Virtual resources like Zoom and FaceTime, and there's a host of others. Even the occasional face-to-face -face meeting when it's convenient. One group I worked with for several years were regularly involved in meetings together, regional and national meetings of their denomination, during which they came early or stayed late, so they made time to get together and check in with each other. I don't have a real clear sense of where you are all and whether that's a possibility, but I'm certainly going to raise it before you as something to consider. Another approach, the one that this assignment will help you to develop these two weeks, is an intentional rule for your life. Built upon your own personal work, 
the experience of this semester and other formational engagements, other courses you're taking at the seminary, you can determine before God to continue the disciplines, the spiritual practices of the Christian faith. An ancient Christian practice that is enjoying new life in our lives is the development of what is called a rule for life or a rule of life. You will find posted on Canvas this week an article written by Christian Sign, Christine Sign of Mustard Seed Associates. This provides the introduction to and suggested order for your slide. You will find there also a rule they have written for themselves. Part of the reason I included this particular article is because of the model it presents. I do not mean for you to replicate it. I include it only as an illustration of the way one group addressed the challenge. It represents a way that one person could also address the challenge. After watching the narrated PowerPoint on self-examination and after reading the sign article, Why Do We Need a Rule of Life? When you are ready, complete the provided process, which you'll find in week 15, although it will be open beginning now, basically, and submit it under discussion for that week so that everyone can see. Of course, if you found a way to stay with other persons in class in a kind, some kind of continuing, perhaps virtual arrangement, your individual rules would be a good place to start in your continuing effort to be intentional in your continuing formation. Also, it would be good for accountability. And I might offer, should you decide to do that, two or three of you or whatever, decide to continue to meet together in some format, and you want to know how to make that happen and how to keep it going, feel free to get back in touch with me. I can provide you some guidance. Well, enough for now. I hope you will take this week with some real seriousness, and I look forward to reading and reflecting on your rule of life.